Hello and welcome to this short presentation on Lang Patterns in the Dog and Cat. Lang Patterns were created to make teaching of Lang changes easy, however over the years they have become a source of confusion among students and professionals. Generally, the normal Lang is radiolucent. It's radiolucent and it only contains arteries and veins that we can actually normally see. And we can see the arteries and the veins as they appear tubular and they become thinner or tougher as they go towards the periphery. So it's a very simple structure to see radiographically and it's of course black and white. Now the lung patterns come to explain some of the changes and help us organize them into appearances. We have four main patterns, the bronchial, interstitial, alveolar and vascular. All lung diseases will start from bronchial, peribronchial, they will become interstitial, and then eventually they will become alveolar. Okay. Now, bronchial disease, the quick and easy way, affects only the bronchi. Vascular pattern will involve only the vessels. So we are left with a white or radiopaque bits of lungs that they can be interstitial or alveolar and that's where a lot of the confusion comes into. The quick and easy way to distinguish them, though they are not, it is not a hundred percent, is to look at the whiter bit of the lung and ask yourselves, can I see the vessels even with difficulty? If the answer is yes, I can see the vessels, then it's interstitial. If the answer is no, I cannot see the vessels, then it is alveolar. And that is not 100% because a lot of people will argue that early alveolar you can still see the vessels. The error is minimal to even bother too much with that. But on the other hand, if you want to be very, very specific and you barely see the vessels, then if the whole opacity looks like a fluffy cloud in the sky, that's alveolar. If it looks more rough, linear, that's interstitial. For me, and that's what I recommend to my students, is keep it simple. If it affects the bronchi, it's bronchial. If it affects the vessels, it's vascular. If it is white lung, ask yourselves, can I see the vessels? If the answer is yes, we're talking interstitial. If the answer is no, we're talking alveolar. And that's where the patterns are really, really helpful. Why? If I have a disease in the lung, that's alveolar, like let's say pneumonia, and I treat it and it improves radiographically, then it will become interstitial and then it will become bronchial and then it will become normal lung and the other way around. Let's see a few things more specific. In bronchial pattern, we can have here, we have a drawing that basically we can see the normal appearance. So maybe we can see a few bronchi, but largely the lung is loose and we can see the vessels, the artery and the vein. When we have mineralized bronchi, which is a very... Uh, common appearance and age-related change that nobody really bothers about, we can see actually the walls of the bronchi, but they are not particularly thick, and we can see them end on also. That's a common age-related change. The bronchi is still tougher, and they become thinner as they go towards the periphery of the lung. Then we have the thick bronchi, where the bronchi, bronchial walls look much thicker either endon or longitudinal, and they look more like tram lines or donuts, you know, the American variety with a hole in the middle. And then we can have bronchiectasis, in which case the bronchi, they don't really taper towards the periphery. Compare the mineralized ones that we can see actually the bronchial walls with the bronchiectasis. In the bronchiectasis, the bronchi appear to just a parallel or they be, can become kind of circular while in 
normal bronchi, the bronchi become thinner as they go towards the periphery. I'm exaggerating a little bit to make the point. So, when the bronchi, and we can see bronchial thickening, then we can think an abnormal bronchial pattern, or we can see mineralize of the bronchi, then we have to think age-related change. So, here is a mineralized bronchus on the left of this image, and we can see this small end on bronchi, and some they may look a little bit more uh, longitudinal, and we can see this thin mineralized wall. You know, normal thickness, just more visible, common with age. In chondrodystrophoid dogs, even below a year, we may be able to see bronchial calcification. We can have bronchial thickening, we can see how thick this wall is, it looks like a donut, and we can see it end on longitudinal. And here I have practically an alveolar pattern just to highlight how bronchiectasis looks like. Can we see this bronchus? There is no particular tapering as the bronchus goes in the periphery. And bronchiectasis is not a disease in itself. Bronchiectasis is basically the end results of any untreated lung disease. Effectively, eventually, the bronchi are going to be affected. So, when we see bronchial pattern, either mineralization and or thickening, we can consider mineralization when they are thin, and we said that is age-related, usually, change. We consider, of course, bronchitis. And some books, they consider also what they call peribronchial coughing. You will say, what is that? Basically, that is a little bit of opacity that is not in the bronchial wall, it's around the bronchi. But because we have the wall of the bronchi that looks normal, and this opacity tends to be, we just change quickly color here, just around the bronchi, it may be perceived as thick and bronchi. And that's why they include that like an early pulmonary edema. So, that's about bronchial pattern. Bronchi being mineralized and or thick. Now, alveolar and interstitial, you already know the drill here, how it works. Here I have a normal lung at the top, then we have an interstitial pattern and then an alveolar pattern. And we can see that in the interstitial pattern, the lung is opaque, but I can see the vessels, while in the alveolar pattern, I cannot. Also, in the early alveolar, I can see air in the bronchi, which is called air bronchogram. While in the later alveolar, the bronchi will be flooded also, so the whole lung will be totally radiopaque, totally white, without any bronchi there. So, that's how it goes. Interstitial pattern, we can see here, clearly, an area of increased lung opacity that we can clearly, even with difficulty in areas, see the vessels. Even here, that may argue could be an early alveolar, we can still see a little bit of vessels. So this is how interstitial looks like. And we can see here just a zoomed in for people who don't believe me. And now we can actually see the vessels only magnified this time. And we can see them clearly within the opaque lung. So if that happens, if we can see the vessels in the affected lung, that you can call it interstitial. Now when we come to interstitial pattern, the nodules are an interstitial pattern, easy way to remember. When you see pulmonary lung nodules, these are interstitial pattern. And you read in the books like hazy, you know, like nodular interstitial pattern, the first word, or unstructured sometimes, you know, the first word just describe the shape of the pattern. They are all interstitial patterns. If you read in the books interstitial patterns, you will see whole lists, and it varies whatever the shape of the pattern is. Now, if you look carefully and you exclude artifacts, either position, exposure, or whatever, effectively for interstitial pattern, there are four main differential diagnoses. Pneumonia, edema, hemorrhage, neoplasia. Now, in the dog, and only in the dog, not in the cat, 
Pneumonia tends to be usually ventrally cranioventrally, while edema and hemorrhage is usually cododorsally. Only in the dog, not the cat. Neoplasia can be anywhere. So knowing that it gives you an idea of most what is most likely and what is least likely. Alveolar pattern, the lung again is white, only this time we do not see any vessels like in the consolidated cranioventral lung lobe here. In the early, we can see like here air in the bronchi, creating what we call air bronchograms. Now if this is left untreated, the bronchi will be flooded also and you will just have a white lobe with nothing else. Now alveolar pattern has a very similar differential to interstitial. If you look carefully through that, again we have pneumonia, edema, hemorrhage, neoplasia. We can include lung collapse, therophilaresis or pulmonary infarct. When it is diffuse, and we can see throughout the lung, two more things we need to definitely consider and ask for the history, cases of near droning or smoke inhalation. Vascular pattern, we check the vessels to see if they are big, and here we can see two huge arteries and vein. Arteries are lateral, veins are medial, arteries are cranial in the lateral view, veins are caudal. How do we decide if they are big? On the ventrodorsal or dorsoventral view, we look at the level of the ninth rib, and we measure the width of the vessel on that level and the width of the rib. And the vessel should be equal or less to the thickness of the ninth rib. On the lateral view, we measure the maximum width of the vessel to, bear with me, proximal third of the fourth rib. So, on VDDV, look at the ninth rib as they cross, measure the vessel there, check the width of the rib, and see if they are big. On the lateral, look at the widest point of the vessel and compare it to the proximal third of the fourth rib thickness. Should be equal or less. If more, it is just big. If the vessels are small, we don't have really a measurement, but the whole lung looks too black and the vessels look almost like lines. So, what we consider when we see, for example, only the arteries being big, then we think pulmonary hypertension, like in le right to left shunt, uh, PDA, dirofilaria. If we only have the veins, then we think congestion, because of, especially due to mitral insufficiency, because they all finish in the left atrium. If, like in the example before, both arteries and veins were big, we're thinking over-circulation, a left-to-right shunt, over-hydration. And when they are small, and we said, how do we decide that? The whole lung looks too dark, you know, the vessels look like lines. We're thinking hypovolemia, or shock, or even tetralogy of fallow. So just to quickly recoup. Bronchial pattern affects the bronchi, think mainly bronchitis or mineralization. Interstitial alveolar patterns, we have opaque lungs. If we can see the vessels in the opaque lung, even with difficulty, consider that interstitial, if we cannot consider that alveolar. In the alveolar, the early one, we have air in the bronchi. These are the air bronchograms, very characteristic. Later on, these bronchi fill up, so we don't see anything rather than a white or opaque correct term lung. Okay, for this we always think pneumonia, edema, hemorrhage, neoplasia, we said, and for generalized alveolar, think also near droning and smoke inhalation. Vascular, we said, big vessels, they are bigger than the ninth rib width as they cross it on PD or TV, or the proximal third of the fourth rib on the lateral view. And if they are small, the whole lung looks much, much more loosened. And here is a list of what to think. So effectively, it's not so tricky to identify the pattern if we keep it simple. But the pattern, as you saw, have a list of differences. It's not specific, and that is the drawback we have. And we have to consider everything else we know 
before we put our differentials in order. So effectively, on radio graphs we see through a window and we expect to get from that out the whole picture. And as far as patterns, it's simple to describe. It's a little bit more challenging to conclude what it is. Thank you 